In this video, you will learn how to set up MySQL Master Slave Replication. In this design, reads and writes can be sent to the master server while only reads should be sent to the slaves. This type of configuration is great for systems that process many reads, but not that many writes, as is the case for many websites. If you want to increase read performance, you can simply add more slaves. We'll be using two servers. The first server, called DB01, is going to act as the master. The other server, DB02, is going to act as the slave. Let's install MySQL on DB01. These are Ubuntu boxes, so I'm going to be using the apt-get command to install it. You'll be prompted to enter a MySQL root password. Like you see here, I'm just going to leave it blank. Next, we need to edit the my.cnf file. And what we're going to do is change the bind address to the IP address of the server. Next, we need to give this server a unique server ID. We'll just uncomment it and leave it at one. And then we're going to uncomment log underscore bin here to enable binary logging. Now we can uh, restart MySQL to make these changes go into effect. We'll need a user that we can use for replication, so we'll go ahead and create one now. I'm going to create a little bit of test data to simulate what it will be like to add slaves when there is already existing data. Next, let's create a data snapshot using MySQL dump. Using the dash dash master dash data option will cause MySQL dump to write out the binary log position information in the dump file. The backup will have a change master statement in it. If you don't use the dash dash master dash data, then you'll have to manually put the master database into read-only mode, perform the dump, and note the binary log file position by using the show master status command. There you can see that it recorded the binary log file and the log file position. Let's go ahead and copy that file over to DB02. All right, we'll hop on over to DB02 and get MySQL installed. Again, I'm just going to leave the root password blank. I'm going to edit the my.cnf file over here, and we're going to set the uh, bind address to be the server's IP address.
We're simply going to increment the server ID by one, so we'll set it to two. This needs to be a unique value and it also needs to be a positive integer. All right, we'll restart my SQL. Now we're going to tell this slave some information about the master. We're going to use that user we created earlier and the password that goes with that user. Okay, we'll exit. And now let's restore the data from the master server. Remember, this will set our master log file name and master log file position. Finally, we'll go ahead and start the slave. And we'll show the slave status. There you can see the master log file, the master log file position, and you can see that the slave is running. Let's hop on over to our master server on DB01 and add another row to our cats table. All right, now we should be able to see these cats here. And we can see it on the master. Let's go over to our slave on DB02 and we can see that this new row has been inserted in our table. So the replication is working. You can also show the slaves by running show slave hosts. If you want to add another slave, create a snapshot from the master, set the server ID on the new slave to something unique. Again, it's just easiest to increment that number by one. Tell the slave server what user, password, and host to use for the master server. Import the snapshot and start the slave.